Lesson 118, Shifting Graphs on a Coordinate Plane. We've been learning about functions, and one thing that really helps is to understand how a function is related to its graph. We talked about that a little bit earlier in the course when we studied parabolas. The equation for a parabola actually qualifies as a function, but back then we talked some about how changing the equation can change the graph. Let me just show you a graph. This is a simple parabola with its vertex at the origin. And now let's shift this graph upward by two places. We'll just slide it up. See, now the vertex is not at the origin. It's at the point 0, 2. But look what happens to the equation. Instead of y equals x squared, it's y equals x squared plus 2. Basically, adding 2 to the function, what that does is it shifts the parabola up by two places. When the equation changes, the position of the graph changes. And if we had added 5 instead of 2, if the new equation had been y equals x squared plus 5, then the graph would have been shifted up 5 places. Adding a number to the function shifts the graph of the function up that same number of places. That's how it works. Now let me just ask you a quick question. What if we started with the graph of y equals x squared again? And then what if we shifted the graph up by 9 places? What would the new equation be? That's right. It has to be plus 9 because whatever number you add to the function, that's how many places the graph shifts up. And what do you think the vertex of the parabola is after it's shifted up nine places? Exactly. It has to be 0, 9, because when you move straight up, that makes the y coordinate bigger. It doesn't change the x coordinate. So you go from 0, 0 to 0, 9. Now let's talk about what happens to a graph when we subtract a number from the function or add a negative. That's the same thing. But what happens then? You can probably guess it's going to shift the graph down. And just to show you, let's start with y equals x squared. And this time, let's add a negative 1 to the equation. And when you do that, the graph does this. It shifts down by one place. And so now the vertex is at the point 0, negative 1. And we could write the equation as minus 1 if we wanted whether you add a negative or subtract a positive. Either way, it's going to shift the graph down by that many places. Now let me ask you a question. Here's a graph. This is a parabola that has the same shape as y equals x squared, but it's been shifted. And then here's the question. What do you think the equation for this parabola is? Exactly. Since the graph is shifted down four places, that tells us that 4 has to be subtracted from the function, or we could add negative 4. And we've been doing all of our examples on the simple parabola y equals x squared, but the rule about shifting a graph up or down actually works for any function. And let me just show you the general rule using functional notation. If we start with any function, f of x, and add any number a to get f of x plus a just shows that you're adding a number to the entire right side of the equation. If you do that, then the function's graph will be shifted a places vertically. And if a is positive, the shift will be upward. If a is negative, the shift will be downward. And this is the rule. And it works for any function, not just x squared. And let me just show you an example of a third degree function. y equals 2x cubed plus 5x squared. Even though this has a second power, it's still third degree because of this third power, this x cubed. And if we graph this function, here's what it looks like. It's pretty complicated. The more complicated an equation, the more complicated the graph is usually going to be. But now let's change the equation by adding 3 to the right side. 
What do you think is going to happen to the graph? Let me give you some choices. Exactly. It's going to shift up 3 because we added a positive number, 3. And here's what actually happens to the graph. It has exactly the same shape as before, but it's just three places higher on the coordinate plane. And this point right here that was at the origin before is now at 0, 3, three places higher. But that's an example of shifting a higher degree function. And the main point is just that the rule about shifting a graph up or down, that rule works for any function, not just for parabolas. And what about shifting a graph horizontally, you know, to the left or to the right? Well, when you do that, it also changes the equation in a very specific way. The change is a little different from vertical shifting. To show you what happens, let's go back to a simple parabola, the y equals x squared parabola. And this time, let's shift this to the left by four places. And then here's what happens to the equation. It changes from x squared to x plus 4 squared. Basically, instead of adding 4 to the entire right side, the way we would do if we were shifting upward, we add 4 just to the x. That's how it works. And notice that the vertex of the parabola is now at the point negative 4, 0. It moved from the origin four places to the left, so x changed to negative four. Now let's go back to the original parabola again, y equals x squared, and this time let's shift the graph four places to the right. What do you think will happen to the equation? Perfect. To shift four places to the right, we have to add negative four to the x, or we could subtract four, either way. And now let me just show you the graph. The shape of the graph is the same. It just got shifted four places to the right. And so the vertex is at the point four, zero now. The x value of the vertex changed from zero to positive four. So the basic rule for shifting a graph horizontally is when you add a positive number to x, the graph is going to shift to the left. And when you add a negative number to x, that's going to shift the graph to the right. That's how it works. And it's kind of confusing because it's the opposite of what you might expect. You know, we're used to thinking that moving to the right is positive and moving to the left is negative because that's the way numbers work on a number line. But it works the other way when you're doing a horizontal shift. And then the important thing is that this works for any function, not just for parabolas. And here's the rule written out formally using functional notation. For any function, f of x, adding any number a to x to get f of x plus a. And that just shows that you're adding the number to the x directly, not just to the entire right side. But when you add any number a to x to get f of x plus a, that shifts the graph horizontally. And if A is positive, it will shift the graph to the left. If A is negative, it will shift the graph to the right. Just to make sure you're with me on this, let me ask you a question. Here's another graph. And what if we wanted to shift this graph six places to the right? How would the equation change? That's it. You subtract. 6, or you could add negative 6, but it's negative even though we're shifting to the right. And that's the opposite of what you might expect. And the other thing to notice is we subtracted the 6 directly from x. We didn't subtract it from the entire right side like this one. This choice is actually a vertical shift. This would shift the graph down 6 places. And it's sometimes kind of hard to tell the difference between a vertical shift and a horizontal shift. Basically, a vertical shift is what we call an outside shift, an outside change. And that means it's the last operation done to x in the equation. Like, if you were shifting y equals one-third x squared, if you were shifting this up six places, 
the addition of 6 is going to be the last thing done to x according to the order of operations rules. See, the x is squared first, and then the multiplication by one third is second, and then the addition of 6 is last. And adding 6 causes the graph to shift upward 6 places. Vertical shifts, whether they're up or down, are always the last operation. And the word outside basically means outside the square. But a horizontal shift is an inside change. And that just means that the change you make has to be the first operation done to x. Like on our last example, we shifted the graph six places to the right, and the subtraction was the first operation that was done to x. See, since the subtraction is inside the parentheses, the 6 is subtracted from x first, and then that total is squared second, and then the last operation is the multiplication by one third. And so inside change, the word inside, that basically means that the subtraction or the addition, whatever it is, has to go inside the parentheses. That's what the the main point is the easy way to tell the difference between a horizontal shift and a vertical shift is the horizontal shift is going to be inside the parentheses. Here's another example that shows the difference between outside change and inside change. See, here's a function y equals 3x. It's actually a straight line. And if you want to shift this vertically, if you want to shift it up five places, then you need to make the addition of five the last operation done to x. You just add five to the entire right side. But if you want to shift the graph horizontally five places to the right five places, then the five's got to go inside parentheses. It's got to be the first operation done to x. And notice it's a subtraction of five, even though the graph is shifting to the right. It's the opposite of what you might expect if you were just thinking about the number line. And the rule works the same way for this function. y equals 1 half x cubed, this third degree function. If you want to shift this one down one place, then the subtraction of 1 has to be the last operation done to x. You subtract 1 from the entire right side. It's an outside change. But if you want to shift one place to the right, then you've got to put the subtraction inside parentheses. And that makes it the first operation done to x. It's an inside change, inside the parentheses. Now, it's also possible to do two shifts at once, both a vertical and a horizontal. And to show you that, let's just go back again to our simple parabola, y equals x squared. And let's say we want to shift this four places to the right, and then at the same time, three places up. How do you think we should change the equation? You've got it. To do the horizontal shift, you have to put the four inside parentheses. And it's got to be a subtraction of four, because we're shifting it to the right. And then to do the vertical shift, you have to add three, and it's got to be the last thing done to x on the outside. And then here's what actually happens to the graph. See, it shifts to the right four, and then at the same time, up three places. And then notice the vertex changes from zero, zero, that's where it was originally, to the point four, three. The x value of the vertex went up by four. That's going to the right four places. And then the y value of the vertex went up by three, which is going up by three places. And the new graph has exactly the same shape as the original, but it's just been shifted both horizontally and vertically. And by the way, when you shift a graph like this without changing its shape, the technical word for that is translation. And by doing a horizontal and a vertical shift at the same time, you can basically move a graph anywhere on the coordinate plane. Now, one last thing I want to show you is you may remember Earlier in the course, we learned to graph a parabola by putting it into this form. y minus k equals a times x minus h squared. Remember, the vertex is the point h, k. So whatever the vertex is for your parabola, 
its x value is going to be in the h position in the equation, and its y value is going to be in the k position. Well, what's kind of interesting is this equation is very similar to our last example. y equals x minus 4 squared plus 3. And actually, to make these exactly the same, we can just move this 3 here over to the left side. That makes it negative, makes it a minus 3. And then we can just put the number 1 in the a position. And that won't change the value of anything, multiplying by 1. But now if you compare this with this equation up here, you can see that the vertex of the parabola has to be at the point 4, 3. And we know that that's right. And this just shows you where this graphing form of a parabola actually comes from. Because if you start with a simple equation like y equals ax squared, this is the form for a parabola that has its vertex at the origin. If you start with this, and then if you shift this graph vertically by k places and horizontally by h places, then you're going to end up with y minus k equals a times x minus h squared. And it's those shifts that put the new vertex at the point hk. And so I just wanted to show you that the mathematicians actually use the rules for shifting horizontally and vertically to come up with this form that we use for graphing parabolas, which is kind of interesting.